Hello, so this is an updated video. Um, essentially what happened is ProRealTime uh, changed the version. So the original videos that I recorded were using ProRealTime version 10.1 and there is now a version 10.2. And I was, um, I was reminded of this uh, by a reviewer of the book on Amazon who explained that uh, the, the way the charts get set up using the newer version of ProRealTime is different. Um, and obviously I don't want there to be any confusion. Um, the charts are still exactly the same, but there may be slightly different ways of setting them up. So I wanted to record this video uh, to illustrate how you can set up the chart templates using this newer version of ProRealTime. So the first thing that you'll want to do is come to ProRealTime.com. And what I'm going to do is start absolutely from scratch. So the first thing you'll want to do is create your free account with end of day data. So let's just click on that button. You'll then want to fill in all of your details. So I will go ahead and do that. Okay, once you've filled in all your, your personal details, you will be sent an email, which will require you to click a link to activate your free Pro Real Time workstation. So go ahead, open your emails, click on the, um, the activate link, and then it's a simple case of logging in. So what we first want to do is launch Pro Real Time version 10.2 and you will end up with this screen. So the first thing that I like to do is to clean up what we're looking at when we log into Pro Real Time. So we can get rid of this list, we can get rid of this bottom chart. We then just have the settings bar and a single chart. So we can maximize the size of the chart. We can get rid of automatic trend lines just by clicking this little box up here. Okay, the next step is by no means necessary, but what I also like to do is just to make my charts look the way uh, that I want them to look. So if I right click on the charts and I come to chart settings, I like to see some horizontal and vertical grids. I like to display the daily or yearly high and low. So you can see here on the chart, it's now telling us the high price and the low price of the year. The vertical scale density, put that to high. And I can click on apply all charts and then the same chart template will be applied to all different charts that we create. So go ahead and click close. Excuse me, there's one other thing that I also do. I like to add a little bit more width on the right edge of the chart. So right click again, click chart settings again, and here you can see the amount of future in percentage of width, and you can just increase that. So increase that to something like six, apply to all charts, click close. So now we have the basic chart set up. Now the next thing we we'll want to do is obviously to apply all of the indicators that the daily breakout and counter trend strategy from the book we want to apply all the indicators that apply to those two strategies. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to just delete all of the indicators which are automatically populating our charts when we first log into Pro Real Time version 10.2. So down in the indicator pane at the bottom, we have relative strength index. Just get rid of that by clicking the cross. And we can also get rid of these moving averages. If we click on the little spanner in the top left hand corner of the chart, Click on moving average simple, just click the little bin delete icon, and then we'll delete the other moving average as well. And we can come away from that. And then finally, I like to have the charts just a normal white background. So again, if you right click, go to chart settings, and then up here we have colors, just click on background, click in the white, if that's what you want, so obviously you can go with any color. So you could go red, for example, but it's not very nice. But I want white, so click on white, and that's all done. Okay, so now we need to start adding the indicators from the strategies in the book. To do that, we want to come up to this little area up here, which is the Add Indicators button. So left click on that. And then the first two indicators we'll add are the moving average indicators. So you've got moving average indicators at the top of this list. Click to add. 
we'll do the long moving average first, so 140 days. Simple moving average, apply to close. I like to have a normal line rather than a dotted line. And we'll make that indicator blue. And you could also make it a bit thicker if you wanted by just clicking on the width drop down. So there is our 100, excuse me, 120 period simple moving average. Next, we'll add a shorter term moving average. So again, click on, excuse me, click on this little box here. Moving average, you want to click add. Change that to 40 periods. Again, change the style to a straight line. Obviously, all these little things are actually preferential. You may like dotted lines, that's fine. So you know how you like the charts to look. But I'll just keep this very simple. So we have a red line, which is our 40 day moving average. And the blue line is the 120 day moving average. So that's the first step. So remember from the book, we only want to be long stocks which have a 40 day moving average above the 120 day moving average. The next thing we want to add are the Donchian channels. So again, click on the indicator pane, scroll down and we have Donchian channel. So click Donchian channel, click add. And again, we change this to 40 for the number of periods. And then to get rid of all this shaded area, which again, I find a little bit uh, annoying and unnecessary, we can come to uh, the color zone here and we can just uncheck these boxes. So you can see we've now got rid of the shaded area. And finally, we don't need this little middle Donchin channel. So again, on the left hand side here, you'll see Donchin channel middle. Just click that. Just click that and then in style, you can make that invisible. So we no longer see that on our charts. Click the little cross. And here you can see we have the basic chart settings. So we have a 40 day Donchian channel and we have our moving averages. Okay, the next thing that I like to have on the charts is volume. So again, come to the add indicator button. At the top of the list, we have volume. Just click it, click on add. And this is actually a chart of the Euro US dollar at the moment. So there is no volume data. So with the actual Pro Real Time Settings bar, we can search for, let's search for Apple stock. So here we have a chart of Apple at the top and the volume at the bottom. Now, obviously it doesn't look very nice at the moment because the volume pane is so large. So just click it, drag it down, and it's now a more reasonable size. Okay, the next thing that uh, we need to do is apply a moving average to the volume. Because if you, if you remember with the breakout strategy, we required the volume on the day of the breakout to be 1.5 times the value of the volume moving average. So to apply a volume moving average, which is automatically adjusted to be 1.5 times the value of the volume moving average, in the volume pane here, just click on the little spanner, and then we need to add indicator, add moving average. So now we can see there's a moving average on the volume pane. Again, I like a, a normal straight line. We'll make it a bit thicker so you can hopefully see it better. I'll make it blue again, hopefully makes it more visible to you. And then to shift it, we can come to vertical shift and just put in 50. And if you watch the little moving average in the volume pane here, when I close, you'll see the volume moving average will automatically move up 50%. So just keep an eye on the blue line. And there you can see. So the moving average here is the 20 day volume moving average automatically adjusted to be 1.5 times the actual volume moving average. The next thing that we'll want to do is add the stochastics oscillator to the chart. So again, click add indicator, scroll down to stochastic, click add. The number of periods, you'll want to change that to 20. The percent %K number of periods, leave that at 3. The percent %D number of periods, put that to 1. Once you've done that, close the box. And then if you remember from the book, 
we used oversold and overbought levels of 90 and 10. So come to where the horizontal lines are on the stochastic oscillator pane. Just right click and then click settings horizontal line. And here with the value you can change that to 90. And on the left again click horizontal line and it's currently 20. So we'll change that to 10. Close that settings box. So now the stochastic oscillator is all set up. We can make it a bit smaller by just dragging down on these panes. And finally, we're going to want to add the average true range indicator.